All right, scholars, let's take a look at our last cycle, the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen exists most commonly as N2 gas in the atmosphere. And remember that 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen gas. And this is a really strong chemical. It's a chemical of two nitrogen atoms with a triple bond between them. So it can be really difficult to break that apart. As we take a look at this cycle, let's draw land as before, ocean, and land uh, going under the ocean like this. Okay. So the first step of this cycle is called nitrogen fixation. And I'm going to draw that here in red. And in nitrogen fixation, we have N2 going to NH3, which is also called ammonia. And you had a chance to smell ammonia the other day in class. So this is nitrogen fixation. There's some things we should know about nitrogen fixation. We'll take notes on this down here on the bottom. And we'll do that here in blue. All right, nitrogen fixation occurs by lightning. This is one way. It takes a, uh, it takes a large amount of power, like from a lightning strike, to have the energy to break apart an N2 gas and make it react with the hydrogen in the, in the atmosphere. The other way is by specialized bacteria. This is what we're going to focus on today. Specialized bacteria on legume plant roots. What kind of bacteria are we talking about? One type is called rhizobia. You will need to be able to recognize this name. And by legume, it means plants. I mean soybean. I'm sorry. It means beans. The most common example is soybean plants. All right, so um, we'll take a, there's an image of that in your book. We'll take a look at an image of it in our next class period. But you have these roots, and on the roots are little nodules where the bacteria have a mutualistic relationship with the plant. And um, the, the roots are giving the plants a place to live. I'm sorry, the roots are giving the uh, bacteria a place to live, and the bacteria are providing uh, ammonia to the, um, to the soil surrounding the roots. This process of fixation could also occur in chemical factories, doing what's called the Haber-Bosch process, which was discovered in the early 1900s, just in time to make um, good explosives for World War I. And then after that, kicked off our industrial agricultural movement, because now we had synthetic fertilizers. All right, back to the cycle here. The next step in the cycle is for this ammonia to be turned into NO3 nitrates. These nitrates are a form of nitrogen that living things can use. We can't directly use ammonia, so it has to be first turned into nitrate. And this is done by specialized um, well, let's see here. This is a this has a, a name for it called nitrification, and it is also done by bacteria. Different set of bacteria. And um, once it's in nitrate form, then it's able to be used by plants. So if we have a tree here, and um, these nitrates can now flow into the tree. So once it's in a nitrate form, it can go through the roots and get assimilated. Assimilation into the tree. That just means it becomes part of the tree. When that plant decomposes, the nitrate is turned back into ammonia. So this would be our decomposition. Uh, 
And remember that producers, I mean, sorry, consumers are also eating this. If we go back to our giraffe. As the giraffe is eating the plant, when it dies, it's also going to undergo decomposition. And um, the nitrates in its body will go back into ammonia. So this is sort of a, a sub-cycle here, that the nitrates go into living things. When they decay, it goes back into ammonia. And then soil bacteria can convert that back into nitrates. But we really need to finish the, the cycle that we are showing in red. So the step we haven't done yet is for nitrates to go back into nitrogen. And this is called denitrification. And it is done by soil bacteria. Now, all these bacteria are in soil. All right, so this completes the loop here in red. N2 going to ammonia. Ammonia being turned into nitrates. Nitrates being used by living organisms and denitrifying bacteria turning the nitrates back into nitrogen. If this last step weren't there, the level of nitrogen in our atmosphere would slowly um, deplete. This process that we just showed also occurs in the ocean. You have N2 gas, and um, that's converting into, uh, let's see here, let me change the color on that. We have N2 gas, which converts into ammonia through nitrogen fixation, and that can convert into nitrates, and nitrates can be converted back into nitrogen. So that's the basic nitrogen cycle, and it occurs in both ocean ecosystems and terrestrial ecosystems too. So there's um, aquatic microorganisms that can do these steps as well. Okay, now as far as the last part here, looking at human influence, we've had a pretty strong influence on this nitrogen cycle. So human impact, and that's mostly through our development of this process, this chemical process, the Haber-Bosch process. We're, make, we're doing too much nitrogen fixation. We're doing it too, way, too much in two ways. Chemical factories and um, even too much planting of of um, legumes. It, planting legumes is definitely a um, a better way to go about adding nitrogen to your soil as opposed to adding synthetic fertilizers. But if you overplant these legumes, you are again doing something that's um, a little bit out of the natural cycle. And so, what is the overall result of this? The main problem with this is we are getting eutrophication of waters. And with that, getting um, too many, um, too much algae and plant growth. which would seem like a good thing until these algae and plant die. And then you get dead zones, hypoxia. There are many areas across the globe that are experiencing this. Uh, we already looked at the um, Gulf of Mexico when the Mississippi drains into it, bringing all the nitrogen from the synthetic fertilizers and, um, and factories and other, other sources with it. It also occurs um, off the Chesapeake Bay on the east on the east coast, and in Europe, Europe is having a big problem with this. I mean, the population density of Europe is much higher, so they're even more affected by their use of, of fertilizers. Um, so, how do we avoid it? You know, we simply use fewer or use less synthetic fertilizers, or we um, um, we find ways of controlling their um, their release into waterways. Um, okay, we will um, discuss more of these on, in our next class period. So thank you very much scholars for tuning in and for taking the notes about the basic ideas of these nitrogen cycles and phosphorus cycle and carbon cycle 
and um, we'll go over any questions or things you want to clarify in class. Okay, see you then.